On this episode of Food News and Chews, Chef Jeremy and Sylvia visit an after-school program at William Wells Brown Elementary School. Then Chef Jeremy shows the kids how to make healthy Hot Pockets. That's all coming up on Food News and Chews. Food News and Chews is brought to you by these proud sponsors. Alltech, helping farmers feed the world. Azure Restaurant and Patio, worldly influenced, locally inspired. Sullivan University, offering higher education for people with higher goals. Azure Catering, catering the most important events, yours. Critchfield Meats, fresh, high quality, all natural meats, guaranteed. Chef, uh, we yes, are in the middle of a real adventure here. Yes, we are in a classroom, which uh, I'm, I'm scared of being back. Uh, back again. I, I can't they believe they let me back in a classroom, school. actually. So, <laughs> Anyway, we're here today to mm -hmm. work with the William Wells Brown students. And everybody's so much well, more well-behaved than we are. I know. I've mm -hmm. noticed that. I've noticed that. But anyway, we want to do a little food news, a sure. little introduction into this because, you know, with the arrival of the food movement, Chef, mm -hmm. there has been a real increased activity and interest in child nutrition, mm -hmm. in making sure, you know, when, when I was a kid, you just ate anything. And I mean, I got to tell you, Happy Meal today, uh, you have fruit that's involved in it, you have fruit juices. Mm -hmm. I don't recall that. It was all strictly french fries and, you know, that sort of thing. Right. So now things are really changing because people are more aware of food, right? Well, I think, uh, yeah, that's exactly right. And part of what we, we talk about with nutrition is nutrition also deals with the times in your life that you're given nutrients and what it, the effects it has on your mm -hmm. body. And for kids, every every day, every year is very, very crucial with their development yeah, and their overall to health. Grow, you know, your brain. So we need to talk about and address what kinds of calories we're feeding our children or they have access to. That's right. right. Well, and the high incidence of a couple of things. One, diabetes showing up much earlier mm -hmm. in children and obesity Correct. issues, which is defined, I think, generally as 10% over your ideal weight. Mm -hmm. Let me read a couple of statistics to you, Chef, because this is kind of scary. In Kentucky, 18% uh, of children are obese. 8% in a, in a survey said that they did not eat fruit in the seven days before the survey, didn't eat vegetables, 15% drank pop, sodas, three times or more per day in the same time, 22% didn't drink any milk, and 12% did not eat breakfast in mm -hmm. that time period. Now, I know you say you don't eat breakfast, but you, but you do some of those other things that are good for you. Well, yeah. And, and I bet your mama made you do all the I, rest of those. I don't eat breakfast just simply because I'm making sure my kids are. So I typically you know, yeah, rush. You know, the morning is always a rush time. So, yeah, I'm cooking something nutritious for the kids, usually high protein, something that's going to sustain them and keep them full and uh, not raise their sugar levels, that's which right. I think is important in a classroom, is it's concentration. And, and a whole lot more. Uh, one of the biggest campaigns is by our first lady, mm -hmm. Michelle Obama, who really right. took this on as her issue right. uh, to really address obes obesity issues and really get people. And there were a lot of bad stories out there about mm -hmm. kids throwing away carrots. That, and we have an audience here of, of, of young people. Would you all throw away carrots? Do you like carrots? See, people like carrots. Well, let me ask you this. Would you rather eat a carrot or a bag of Fritos? Carrots. See, I love that. Oh, I'd love to hear that. Are y'all telling the truth? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, see, what I find disturbing, Sylvia, is a carrot nowadays costs more than a bag of Fritos. Oh, you're right. And that's what's kind of uh, disappointing with our food and system. And Fritos have such high salt content. And well, yeah, just the amount of processed, processed goods well, talk inside. talk about that. Processed versus... Natural. Well, I think a lot of the reason you see obesity and diabetes at young ages and even throughout the American population is the prominence of processed foods. And what I mean by processed is it's gone through alterations to where you guys may eat this pizza we're going to make um, or, we, you know, that we did make mm -hmm. um, or we're, you know, about to that has lots of vegetables in it, right? It even um, had broccoli. And we cooked know. it at home. Now, if we had made that, um, that pizza 
uh, or you know, and, and put all the ingredients together, then froze it, that kind of takes away some of the nutritional value. And the longer it sits in the freezer, it diminishes. But also the ingredients we started with were very fresh and whenever possible, local. Uh, so if you started out with frozen vegetables to make the sauce, the vegetables are that much less nutritious, then you refreeze them again. The more times food goes through a process, the less nutrition it is. So the most nutritious food comes right out of the garden, right? That's right. So you need to grow your own garden. Um, so what we... Darnell says they actually have a community garden. I don't know a whole lot about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right there. Great. So that's, the, that's food in its best form. Mm -hmm. The problem is, um, I think a lot of times, children don't have access to fresh food. Yeah. It's much easier to get a chocolate milk or a bag of Fritos than it is to get At an apple store. Uh -huh. and a banana and, you know, some nice apple juice. So. Well, a lot of the companies, big companies, are really getting into this. Like Disney is mm -hmm. now saying they will not support ads. Uh, uh, many more are following suit. And there's just a whole lot more pay, uh, paid attention to health issues. Uh, no antibiotics, no hormones. So people are becoming much more uh, educated. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's controversial because some of the food companies are kind of pushing back and saying, hey, you know, this stuff is healthier. But I think as a rule of thumb, chef, I think you gave some good advice, and you've given some good advice, I've okay. heard you give to children, about when you go to the grocery store. And I think you want to repeat that for food news. Yeah, when you guys go into the grocery store, stay to the outside of the building, the outside aisles. That's where all the good food is. Everything in the center is just made of sugar and processed foods. So what you're going to find as you go outside is you're going to be able to find all the meats and chicken and all the stuff that you like to eat on the outside. You're going to find your eggs and your dairy and your cheese, right? You're going to find all the vegetables in the world and probably some nice breads in the bakery. What you're not going to find are fruit roll-ups or goldfish or sugary cereals or all that stuff mm -hmm. with sugar in it, Kool-Aid. So stay away from that stuff. Stay on the outside. And, and you're going to be building good food habits and, and grow big and strong. And, and uh, the other thing I think we should say is everything in moderation. It's okay occasionally, but just the next time you pick up a bag of chips or something sugary, just think about how you should probably reach for something that has more natural ingredients, like sure. a carrot or, mm -hmm. uh, or something that is uh, a fruit, you know, an apple or something like that. That's right. Because it's not bad to eat stuff that's snacky and, and salty. But you just need to eat it in moderation. And, and if you need enough spinach and vegetables, then you can have all the junk food you want. I promise. <laughs> yes. And so just pay attention because the local food movement is bringing all this about, and that's what it's called. And it's like people getting into more and more of this idea of eating well and, and how uh, nutrition is related to health uh, later on in life uh, and your brain development and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff like that. So just be cognizant of it. Follow Chef Jeremy's <laughs> grocery store advice and you will do just fine, right? That's right. But one person that I've learned a great deal from and is a very, very special person to me and to this school is somebody that you all know and love, and that's Miss Judy. She's known as Miss Judy here. To address us a little bit about what you do, Miss Judy doing? is famous, by the way, for her I work like in the too. newspaper business. <laughs> Like years and years, like 30 years, as editor of the Kentucky Post. Okay, they she, already think I'm an old woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're beautiful. And uh, she also has started an online news, two online newspapers, Kentucky Forward and the Tribune mm -hmm. in northern Kentucky. And the, the sky is limitless for mm -hmm. Miss Judy. So, Miss Judy, tell us what uh, this is all about here today. Well, this is all about these students in a, in a volunteer after school program at William Wells Brown Elementary starting a newspaper for the school. So we've been uh, doing a lot of fun things, learning about newspapers, learning about how to ask questions. The kids establish their own code of conduct, which is of, of course necessary to any professional person. So they, they know how journalists are supposed to behave. They have learned the who, what, when, where, how, and why thing and they know that they are always to ask the why question. Mm -hmm. okay. So you may get some why questions. Sound like some tough questions today. coming my way. <laughs> so we've talked about a press conference setting which is what we're going to do today with mm -hmm. you Chef Jeremy. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. And I'm just proud to be working with United Way on this terrific program. And she has a couple of, one of them is really good, Miss Ashley and Miss Katie. She also has me. <laughs> but I'm having a ton of fun. And I it's love great. my faithful uh, 
and, and fellow volunteers. And Miss Judy, there's a lot in here about different kinds of ways that we tell the news. Right. Because we also will be sharing some news about child nutrition and those kinds so of issues. So we've talked about um, the lifestyle mm -hmm. program that you have. That's also journalism by some uh, definition. We've talked about newspaper journalism, about le electronic journalism. We we talked about a lot of things. So they could they could inform you about many. And people things. are interested in food. Almost every yeah. newspaper has a food column. Sounds That's like they're more educated in media than we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. All right. This would be in your feature section of your newspaper. Mm -hmm. When we do the stories about Chef Jeremy and Miss Sylvia in their TV show about food, it will appear in our feature section. That's awesome. And you are going to be writing the story, so be sure to take lots of notes. Good afternoon, Chef Jeremy. Thank you for having Thank you for coming to our school. I am Avriana. I'm Avery on a reporter for WW, WWB Times. My question is, when did you first become, become interested in being a chef, and how did you prepare for your career? Well, those are both very, very good questions. Thank you for asking. Um, you know, being an interest in a chef came from being at home and cooking a lot. My family, my granny, was a very good southern cook. So she was the lady that had the big cast iron skillet out and she grew her own garden and she pickled her own vegetables and she just was always doing something in the kitchen. Whether, I mean, she had chickens in her yard and she was a bit of a farmer. She picked cotton and tobacco and she had kind of a, a, a you know, a rough life and she grew food to, to survive and to eat. So uh, every Sunday when we go to Granny's house, it was a big southern spread. And I just love the, the memories of being in the kitchen and seeing uh, lots of chicken and dumplings and fried chicken and homemade biscuits and cornbread and green beans and pole beans and shucky beans and cut short greasies and all these things that come out of the garden. So I was fascinated by food. I just love food overall. Um, so as I grew up, I got to spend time in the kitchen with my family and that's where all of my happy memories are because that's where our family connected. So whenever I got out of high school and I saw a chef in a kitchen environment where you walk in and there's a guy in a white suit looking professional. He kind of presented himself in a way that he was, he was very educated and very professional. I thought that was intriguing. I was like, oh wow, people can actually make a, a living doing what I love to do every day. Uh, so that's really what sparked my interest in wanting to cook was the fact that that's what I really, really enjoy. That's where I find my, my, my comfort and my happiness. So that's, uh, I'm happy to be able to do that every single day. This is Darnell. Hey, Hi, Chef Jeremy. I am Darnell Roberts, a reporter for the WWB Times. What is your favorite dish to cook and why? Yeah, that's like the toughest question of all for a chef, right? <laughs> What's the favorite to eat? I'd say bourbon fried chicken. <laughs> so not that I'm dodging this really hard question, but my answer to that is food in general. So you ever wake up in the morning, Darnell, and like, it's kind of gloomy outside, it's not sunny, it's a little bit cold, and you probably feel like you know something hearty like a soup or a stew, or maybe you know something you know kind of greasy like a cheeseburger because it just mm. kind of feels cold outside. Uh, or sometimes you wake up in the summertime and it's hot and humid, and you maybe want a popsicle or a glass of iced tea and something lighter to eat. That's kind of how uh, I, I relate to food. So it's on a day by day basis. So one day I may really enjoy this recipe or this dish and it may change day by day. But most importantly, as a chef, it's most important to react to the ingredients that are coming at you. So we always pay attention to what looks the best and what's gonna taste the best at any given time. Because you guys may have fruit at your house. Maybe, maybe your mom or dad buys some apples or an orange and they sit on the counter. And when you first get them from the grocery, they're not as, the bananas aren't as sweet. But a few days later, we know, okay, now it's time to use these bananas. That's, that's when we want to eat them, they taste the best. And then sometimes maybe you let those bananas sit another few days and they get dark brown. And that's when it's best to make something like banana bread or, or a cake, because the, the sugars have kind of come out and they've oxidized into the, uh, the fruit. So we pretty much, like I said, the one dish that I always like to make changes every single day. Chef Jeremy, I am Santasia, a reporter from WWB Towns. What advice would you give to students who want to become a chef and why would that be a good 
career choice? Well, thank you for the question, question and thank you for asking me because I hope my advice is good. But um, who here likes to cook? Raise your hand. All right, well, that sounds like the best start is just to really enjoy being in the kitchen. Some people find it, you know, like my mother, for instance, she can't stand to be in the kitchen. She don't want anything to do with food. Therefore, I kind of learned to cook that of survival in some senses. So if you really enjoy being in the kitchen and you like to make recipes, you like to follow instructions uh, and stay organized, then that's something you, you'd want to do. My best advice is to, you know, um, sp spend as much time around food that you can. If you have access to, um, you know, if you get a chance to go to the grocery store with your parents, that's one thing I used to always love to do. And uh, in fact, nowadays I love just going to a grocery store and walking up and down the aisles and seeing what's out there and just kind of paying attention to what ingredients there are and kind of identifying what they are. So go to the produce section and spend some time <coughs> looking around and ask some questions. If you see something weird that you don't know what it is, try to find out. And the more you get intrigued by food, the more that you know about it, the easier it becomes to cook it. So if you really, really enjoy food, just spend a lot of time around it. And the cool part about it is whenever you're done cooking, you get to eat it. And that's all it's for. Chef Jeremy, I am Carmen, a reporter from for the WWB Times. Do you have advice for students about healthy eating? Mm. Wow, you know, that is that is a really big <coughs> question. I think, thank you for asking that. Um, advice about nutritious eating. Right when we were talking about going to the grocery store, guys, um, who here enjoys going to do that? To look around, it's just kind of fun, right? Because there's all this neat stuff out there and neat packages and neat labels and all the stuff you want to try and eat. Well, my best advice about nutritious food is you've got a store, right? And I think it's best to just only go to the outside of the store. Don't even worry Ooh, about the inside aisles and going up and down them because all the stuff in the inside aisles is pretty much not nutritious. It's not good for you. It's full of sugar, it's full of additives, it's full of stuff that we don't even know what it is. There's ingredients on those labels that I can't read. So, to pack the most nutrition into your meal, go to the outside aisles, which is the produce section. Oh yeah, it's the produce, yeah, Your fresh. meat and dairy, and then typically your, your bakery and um, deli items. So those are all real foods, unprocessed and nutritious. And that's the quickest advice I can tell you, just stay in that area and you can't go wrong. All right, Chef Jeremy, yes. teach us, and I include me in this, how mm -hmm. to make a Hot Pocket. Okay, so like what we're gonna do is we're basically making a calzone. You ever heard of that term, calzone? Calzone? It's the Italian yeah, word for a Hot Pocket and it's just your dough's been folded over so it's like a baked pocket of pizza. So, what's great about this pizza is we're going to trick you into eating all your vegetables, right? Because <laughs> in this sauce, we've simmered down tomatoes and onions and garlic and basil and peppers and squash and zucchini and eggplant and broccoli and spinach. <gasps> Uh-oh. Darnell. And all those things, you guys are like, ew, I don't want to eat all that <laughs> stuff, right? But I guarantee you just, oh, we, everybody promised delicious. me you'll try one bite. Yeah. Okay. Darnell. Okay. All right, good. If if you try a bite and you like it, then you get to go home with your very own little cheese pizzas. I'm gonna pass oh. out. So, <laughs> but a bite. You can you have, have to all have those, a bite. but you got to try mine first. <laughs> and you better say mine's better. <laughs> anyway, uh, when you're working with dough and you're working with pizza, it's always good to keep a very floured surface. You know what I mean by that? as in sprinkle flour all over your table. That way, your dough doesn't stick yeah. because, here, I should feel this. Feel the under part of it? It's a little bit sticky, right? Ooh. And we'll do the same for you guys. Yeah. A little flour yeah. down. All right. So there you what go. Happens so it's squishy, isn't it? Is when you put it down, the flour kind of keeps stick? it from sticking to the counter, right? So everybody's going to get a sure. dough ball. Who's worked with dough before in this group? Do you guys ever make pizzas at home? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is, this is the same thing but we're gonna fold it over so it's like a little pocket. I like them better because they're better to take to school the next day because mm -hmm. they don't get all messy in your, in your lunch box. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate one. You guys just follow my lead, okay? Because you guys know how to do this, no problem. This is, this is easy stuff. I'm gonna use this dough ball. Oops. 
and bring it over. <laughs> he didn't put right his flour here. down, did he? And then put my flour down, and I'm going to turn them over and get it all floury, right? Yeah. Then the rolling pin, I'm kind of use the flour from my fingers and kind of rub this as well, okay? And now I'm just going to roll. I'm going to use a little bit of room here. This dough into a little oval shape, okay? Yeah. So everybody can take turns with that. And I don't want to do it too big. So once it gets about that long, Which is about we're going to stop. A hand and you size. want to start over there on your side? Now next, I'm going to take our really, really awesome tomato <laughs> sauce. Hey, look, we have a dual. There you go. That's a good way yeah, to do it. Yeah, that's efficient. And we're going to put a little bit in there, right? And then everybody likes cheese, right? So oh, yeah. What kind of cheese is that, Chef? Mozzarella, of course. Mm. Um, a nice little pile of mozzarella. And we're going to, everybody watching? Mm -hmm. Fold over one end just like this, so it's like a half moon. Ooh, like a crescent. Now, see, I'm going to use all my fingers, and now they're floury, right? It's not going to stick. I'm going to press down on the edges, just like ah, that. Ah, that kind of glues the edges together, and that seals huh? it up. So what do you guys think? You think you can make oh, that? Oh, pretty. Mm -hmm. Everybody? Yeah. Okay, once it's done, we'll put it on the sheet tray. Now, you don't have to grease the sheet? Um, I should have floured it. And yeah. It helps out a little right. bit, so. But since so this dough's got a little end, flour, right? we'll just put a little extra on there. Yeah, so that's good. You're doing well. Everybody make one to your own yeah, liking that's good. and put them on the tray and we'll get them in the oven All so right, we can... let's get these guys eat. going.
a big time, Chef. No doubt. Hey, who got who likes broccoli now and <laughs> eggplant and Darnell, squash raise and your zucchini? Hand. <laughs> oh look, Darnell's raising his hands. <laughs> She raised a pizza. I oh, raised a pizza. <laughs> Darnell, you had your pizza with you too, didn't nice. you? Yeah, what well, I um, hated. Well, I had a great time with you kids. I really appreciate you letting me come to your classroom and talk food with you because that's what I like to do. All right, you got a last word, Darnell? Did everybody like the pizza? <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. You, you guys are good cooks. Okay, how about you? You got anything? I know I like the pizza. Good. And uh, Jeremy, how about that recipe? So if you guys want this pizza dough recipe, if everybody wants to recreate it, check out foodnewsandchews.com any night of the week. It's always up. Uh, it should be with a honey pizza we did with corn and, I believe, smoked bacon, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> but you can use the dough for any pizza you want. To. All right. We'll see you next time. Food News and Chews is brought to you by these proud sponsors. Alltech, helping farmers feed the world. Azure Restaurant and Patio, worldly influenced, locally inspired. Sullivan University, offering higher education for people with higher goals. Azure Catering, catering the most important events, yours. Critchfield Meats, fresh, high quality, all natural meats, guaranteed.